All right, everyone. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and it is lovely to see you here on the Friday Masterclass, where today we're going to continue um, working on what we started last week, and unfortunately, the ban hammer cut it off right before I think I got to play the, <laughs> the final version. That is just sometimes the case. Uh, where we took a, 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 a children's song, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and sort of converted it into a creepy, ethereal, movie-style, horror-type soundtrack. And the whole concept here was that you could take any song and using a couple of really basic techniques, namely singing sort of high-pitched and a cappella, and then just adding a lot of dissonance based on the root and the fourth of the chord of the, uh, of, of the root chord of the song, you can kind of create this cool, creepy, atmospheric sort of sound. So we're going to kind of take that to the next level today and go into some deeper mixing techniques because obviously just recording it is the first step. Now we have to actually mix it to make it kind of mix with all of the sound design and the sound effects and all of the other Foley and things going on there. And then if we get some other time at the end, uh, there's a couple things that I laid down the other day. Just kind of woke up with a song in my head, uh, one that you may know, and just start, decided to lay down some vocals. And it's, it's just kind of cool, so I thought I'd share that with you. Why not? Um... Yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. As always, we're coming to you live on YouTube, Behance, and Twitter. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, a couple quick shout-outs here. I see we've got Dr. Jacqueline Hyde and Reverb Mike, Bernadette, nice to see you, Kevin McCluskey, Tim as always, Pierre Julien, how's it going? Steve, how are you doing? Cody Bear, Rick Adams, Mercurial Forte, nice to see you. All right. Umicorn as always, lovely to have you with us. And coming to us over here on the tubes. My, uh, incidentally, of course, anyone who's following along on my channel, you know that you will need to go to this chat right here if you want me to follow the live chats. What's up, Mr. Terza Gaming? So if you want to ask questions live, this is really a good opportunity if you've got some very specific audio vocal mixing things. Um, this is a good opportunity to bring those in. Also, one other thing before I get started. So a couple of sort of audio related things that have happened. So yesterday, if any, any Beatle fans out there, they um, announced the official release date of this Let It Be um, multi-disc box set. So for those of you who are Beatle fans, the Let It Be film, which came out in 1970, has been re-edited by Peter Jackson. So that whole experience, which is now going to be like a three-part series over six hours, it's coming in November to Disney+. Plus. But the album itself has been obviously remixed, lots of outtakes. There's the classic uh, 1969 rooftop performance where they did Get Back, among other things, and Don't Let Me Down. But yesterday, they released three tracks off of this new collection, namely a remix of Let It Be. And I just wanted to, I was just going to switch the cam here to see. So some of you may have seen this uh, in just certain views of the studio when I painted. Uh, psychedelic shop in San Francisco. I don't even know if that's still there anymore, but it's one of those it's one of those gold record things that uh, you know those are those aren't actually real. I mean they're 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 like trophies that record labels make up to give to artists. So I've had that thing, gosh, 30, 32 years or so. It's the first album that got me into the Beatles when I was eleven. Uh, I, I remember. No, I was not eleven in nineteen eighty nine, but. I, w I just remember hearing it for the first time and just freaking out. Oh, wait, was I? No. And uh, it just it just did it for me. So I don't know that I'm even going to buy. I don't even buy that much music anymore. I'm all about streaming these days. But um, this one in particular is very special, and uh, I just might do it. Also, side note, and this this deals with the stuff that we might hear later. I uh, as I mentioned, I was um, I've been watching a ton of different like documentaries and things, just binging on Netflix on the weekends. If you haven't seen Summer of Soul, I think I talked about this a few weeks ago when it, or two months ago when it released, or a month and a half ago, whenever it was. Questlove has put together this film. It's called Summer of Soul. Just check it out. It's on Hulu. It's amazing. The story about the whole pro, uh, uh, about this concert series is amazing. It has incredible performances uh, and so many classic artists. Everyone from Sly and the Family Stone, Nina Simone, The Fifth Dimension, Stevie Wonder, and this is part of the impetus for what caused me to wake up the other morning singing Stevie Wonder and then deciding to lay down some vocals from a Stevie Wonder song. <laughs> just, just how my brain works. Also, I just need to shout out uh, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. in The Fifth Dimension. They are in this film today talking about their performance from 1969. It's so 
freaking magical, I can't even tell you. And if you love the music of that era, you will love this. But just the story and the way that this is cut together, and there's a thread of attendees from 52 years ago who were there. It's, it's such a wonderful, heartwarming, just feel-good kind of film, on top of having amazing music. And as I tweeted out back in July, the two-inch color videotape from which this was sourced looks so amazing in 4K. I mean, the restoration alone, if you're just, if you're just a nerd and you're just into nerdy stuff like that, that alone is reason enough to watch it. Just to see the restoration of like classic two-inch color videotape from 52 years ago. It's so good. And by the way, Questlove even left, you know, there's, there's, there's anomalies. There's things that happen to videotape over time. And you get the weird sort of scan lines and color uh, uh, fringing along the edges. He left it all so that you can see the full frame, as it were. It's just magical. Okay, enough of my little rant there. Let's get to it. So we're going to start here um, over in uh, our Something's Happening video. All right, there we are. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, Beetlejuice. Now I finally get it. Head dust. Ah, oh, yes. Uh huh. Nicole Thomas, it was such a great documentary, right? Bernadette, I think Hulu is geographically limited. Oh, no. Oh, well, that stinks. Oh, man, I really hope there's a way that you can, you can find it. Steve says, yeah, VPN, Matt Saga. That's not a bad idea. Exactly. If you're an Express VPN fan. All right. Yes, indeed. Very cool. Okay. Oh, did I lose audio for a second? That's weird. Did it cut out? Hopefully it's, uh, it's all still there. Okay. All right. So let's take a look kind of where we left off. Now, I did, I did a few treatments since we left this last. And... Um, Namely, you know, in talking about kind of create, so we started again with the, the very basic <laughs> uh, rough sounding vocal of me singing, Mary had a little laugh. It is very bizarre kind of voice, <clears throat> not warmed up at all. Um, and threw a ton of reverb on it. So one of the first things I just want to go over before I even play this back, people were asking about this last week, is I've already set up a series of buses, a series of groups that control the music, the sound design, and the voices separate. So that way I have individual faders for each of those. So if you take a look here in the interface, you'll see that I made a bus that is just the sound effects mix. So if I solo that and play this back, you're just hearing all of the sound design, right? The rain, the thunder, any kind of, you know, additional, uh, uh, ambient sounds, not the Foley, that's, at, or the ADR, that's on a separate fader, right? So we have all of that. Let's bring in some of the, the Foley and the ADR mix. So this will include the little squeaky sounds that I created for the, the fly moving its, its, I almost said hands, moving its the legs. Um, the ADR screaming, which I was, you know, obviously trying to, to match to picture here. So we'll take a listen to some of that. And then, as you see down here as well, a separate um, bus for just the music. Now, specifically, and did I even, did I did, okay. So again, that's the music without the vocals. The reason for that is I, I'm going to, there's only really one lead vocal, and I have that with its own dedicated reverb bus. So people are asking me about that because I had placed reverb in the effects rack on the vocal last week as just a placeholder. See if it's still there. I already took it off. Um, that is not the case, of course. Now I'm using a proper send. And you can see here on send one, I've got it going to the Vox Verb bus. So this gives me a lot more control so that I can really dial in the reverb effect. I'm sending it pre fader. So it just gives me a lot of balancing control. All right. And again, independently now, music. Foley and sound effects are all on their own fader. So I can control the individual mixes of each of those independently. Right. 
Now, we haven't finished mixing the music, but if we wanted to bring it up... or pull it all the way down. All right, so again, they're all on their own faders. This just makes life a lot easier, especially when we're trying to mix independent and individual elements of this, all right? Always a good idea to start sort of grouping things together. Mind you, I haven't really finished the mix of the music. The sound design is pretty much done because I took that from the last finished version. So I'm not gonna need to make really any tweaks there, but it's all those other sounds, the glockenspiel, the pedal tone, the chimes, the strings that we recorded last week. All of that stuff needs a little more tweaking. Okay, so I started with the vocal and um, first thing I did here was to uh, add a little bit of EQ and specifically, I wanted to um, to give it, again, more of that kind of Lana Del Rey-ish sound. And if you're a fan of hers, and I went a little extreme for, for the sake of this demo, but one of the things, one of the techniques that they tend to use a lot on her voice, it's not like the telephone sound, but they tend to really maximize the, the mid-range of her voice. Right, so there's not really a lot of low end. It's not really high and brittle. It's more just this kind of mid rangey which just happens to also be sort of telephone, uh, 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 megaphone sounding. It just adds also, in this context, another level of creepiness. And as mentioned, the reverb bus that I'm using for this, I chose to go with um, a Waves plugin here, which is this one the H reverb, and I'm using something called Lo-Fi, or is it, it's just a preset, 100% um, wet balance here, because again, I'm sending all of this pre-fader. And I'm using um, a specific G-Series EQ, because I really wanted to give this kind of a very filtered sound, but also implement a little compression and gating. That's just the nice thing about this plugin, it just gives me all of those at once. So, you know, I'm a big believer in using native effects, but like all of us, sometimes you just want a specific sound, and each of these different plugins is going to give you a different kind of sound. Our EQ sounds one way, this SSL G series sounds another. If you use something like a Manny Marikin EQ, that's gonna sound different. If you use a, a Rain or some other, a Focusrite or some other, you know, modeled plugin equalizer, it will have its own characteristics as well. So here was the original with a little bit of that reverb. Maybe I'll put the glockenspiel in there. So it's not totally naked. So here's the original without EQ. Mary had a little lamb. Okay. Now, again, it's a little too full-bodied for this. First of all, it's not a great vocal, first. Second of all, trying to add a little creepiness to it, it, it it's, it's just, it's too warm, it's too rich. So, if you take a look here, again, I'm not going to know all the various things, but you can see that, first of all, to create that sort of filtered telephone-like, megaphone-like sound. So I'm cutting everything, first of all, below. I'm cutting about 9 dB at 100 hertz, okay? So that's just going to take away a lot of that low-end fundamental warmth, which I happen to possess a lot of in my regular speaking voice. That just comes out naturally. Additionally, you can see that we're boosting about 6 decibels at 2.5K, so really right in the mid-range there. Cutting, oh, I'm sorry, uh, boosting another 6 dB at around 1.5, and this is again in the high mid section, so we're actually moving and we're, we're using a fairly narrow uh, cue here. And then, are we even boosting at all? No, we're not doing anything to the high end. So we're not even touching the highs. We're really just amplifying the mids. And then uh, for this um, high pass, We've got the high pass filter set at 350 and the low pass filter set at 3K. So what does that mean? Well, again, the telephone sound that a lot, we even have a preset for it in our, um, in our filter EQ, FFT filter, or it might be in the parametric, is typically 400 hertz to 4,000 hertz is kind of the range of the old school analog telephone. So this doesn't go up to 400 and 4K, it goes up to 350 and 3K. So I'm just using the same technique here. The difference is that these high pass and low pass filters just sound a little bit different, all right? Again, each EQ will have its own 
slightly different sound. So if we kick this in now, you're like, geez, this guy's been talking for 15 minutes. Play it, Sam. Here's what that sounds like. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Those of you just tuning in going, oh, that's really dissonant at the end. Why are you playing a half step below the note you're singing? That was intentional because we're trying to create dissonance because there's this huge crescendo of everything. All right. So just real quickly, right? High pass, low pass, 350, 3K. That's kind of the main, that's sort of the main thing. Because right there, that's going to cut off all that low end warmth. It's going to cut off a lot of the highs. And then we just boosted the mid range. We could probably go even a little a little more aggressively on this, to be honest. Uh, I'd probably even pull out, I'm gonna pull out a little bit more below 100, even though again, theoretically, we've cut off everything below 350 based on this high pass filter. But again, these uh, shelving filters here, they just, they're, they're, you're gonna feel there's a curve in the sound as you attenuate those frequencies. And it's just gonna color it a little bit differently. All right, so there's our vocal now treated and that's going to sit pretty nicely and I let what I typically will do is I'll bring back in the sound effects and just start listening you know over top of that to see if there's if it needs any more balancing or how we're doing Mary had a little lamb. it really cuts through little Okay. <laughs> All right. Is it possible to automate the plugin parameters? I think feel like Tim is just throwing questions out there, but um, yes, of course it is. So uh, I don't really have any any need to automate any of them at this second. But yes, if you want to automate um, almost any parameter in a third party plugin, or um, for that matter, uh, a native plugin. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I think I'm using an AU version. Some of these don't automate in some flavors. So we're going to see Tim right now. But yes, here's how you do it. So essentially, if you want to change a parameter over time, let's say we want to change the amount of boost or cut on one of these uh, on one of these frequency ranges. We're going to go into write mode. So down at the bottom of the track, you have your automation lane and you have your four modes, read, write, latch, or touch. You can also access these in the mixer view. And it's right above the fader here, read, write, latch, or touch. So you're going to go into write mode. All right. And let's, uh, yeah, in fact, let's do that. Why don't I, I don't know, I don't know if this high pass filter on this one, because I remember specifically with this SSL one, some of these things don't automate. Let's see. We're going to see if it does. So I'm in write mode. I'm just going to hit play. Okay. And it's going to start writing that automation. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Mary had a Let's see if that did it on that particular one. Okay, it did. So, watch the knob. No hands, ready? Okay, it's that simple. Now, if you want to edit or modify because right now we're not seeing those points, right? So we're going to go into show envelopes. And we're going to go into the SSL G channel. And wherever you see an asterisk, this little guy right there, that's telling you that that parameter has been edited and therefore has keyframes and therefore can be 
further modified manually with, uh, I was gonna say with the pen tool, essentially the pen tool, the, the selection tool here. So if I choose that, now what you get is this automation lane, all right? And these are all, that's the movement of me, you know, decreasing, uh, changing the frequency, lowering the frequency, and then raising the frequency amount. And just to show you, this is completely dynamic. So it doesn't seem to be, uh, there we go, yeah, it's getting a little confused. Right, so you're not seeing it as I'm moving this individually. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But this is going to allow you to, if I didn't want to go, say, all the way to, you know, um, disabling this, which is all the way at the bottom, I'll change the range here. And I can also delete some of these points. Let's delete a couple of these keyframes. All right. So instead of going all the way to the out position where we're no longer using this filter, I don't know what this value is. Maybe this is 20 hertz. Does it tell me there? Yeah, this is 36 hertz. See, as I hover over the keyframe, it's telling me the range. So now it's only going to go to 36 hertz and then linger and then go back up. So if we play it again, take a look. Notice it's hovering. So you saw that it hovered it around 36 and then went back up. It didn't go all the way down. Real simple. All right. Spooky. Cool. I feel like some tape wow and flutter could be fun. Ooh, that's an excellent idea. <laughs> Bernadette. I'm a wizard, naturally. Very good. Love it. Frau Blucher. Okay. All right. Very cool. Okay. All right. So I'll just, uh, I'm going to, because I don't really want that, I'm going to select those keyframes. Oh, they didn't all select for some reason. Can we not select them all anymore? Maybe we can't. So I'm just going to turn this off because I don't want that automation. Easy enough. Leave it as it was. Shrink that up. Okay. And let's focus now on some of the music. Okay. So again, I'm going to unsolo everything and solo the music here so that we can start working on the music mix. Zoom in along the edge here so we can kind of get everything in view. Everybody mixes a little differently. You know, I like to see, um, I like to see all of the tracks slightly wider heightened when I'm mixing them as opposed to really mixing in the mixer view. I do that sort of sometimes at the end, but as I'm doing sort of initial balancing, I, I like it visually because then I can see where things come in. And that's, that's one of the crucial parts of doing something like this. Remember last week, all the music was playing all the time and, and that's it's too much because then you don't really feel the crescendo at the end so if we just start with like the vocal and the glockenspiel it adds to the creepiness right when it's minimal it's just creepier when there's too much happening all at once it might be dark it might be a minor key feeling but it, it loses something right we're trying to strip things away there's already a lot a lot of stuff going on in the sound design so we want to bring things in gradually so let's see where we are. Let's take a listen here. And in fact, I'm going to mute the sound effects so that we can really just focus on the music. All right. Music or you lose it. Nice. <laughs> Mike. All right. Here we go. Mary had a little Backwards also works. Okay. So it looks like the chimes aren't coming in. We did leave that little pedal tone in there. That pedal tone. Now those strings. I don't know if we need those in the beginning. Let's just take it out and hear what it sounds like without. Mary had a little lamb, little Does it sound empty now? Maybe it's a little too empty. Maybe I need something there. So let's see. 
Okay, so already I can hear, I love what I'm doing with the horns, but they need, they need something else. So first of all, we're gonna give, we're gonna create a new bus here, which is another reverb. So I'm gonna add a stereo bus track here, which is just a general ambient reverb that I'm gonna use for any of the music. So I always try and use separate reverbs for vocals, separate reverbs, for uh, instruments. Part of that is because if you use the same reverb, you're gonna double up on kind of that, those same characteristic sounds of a specific room type. Just makes the mix kind of cloudy. We have lots of different reverb variations natively. Um, so you can choose whatever you want there. So why don't, we'll go with a native one for this. How about that? So we'll go to our studio reverb. I'm going to choose a great hall. Let's knock that down a little, make it nice and big. A little bit of early reflection. Make it as wide as possible. I'll keep the frequency cuts as they are. I don't want to dampen this too much. But we'll keep it diffused. And output level of dry will be zero. Wet will be 100. Because I'm going to send these French horns pre-fader. So again, that's going to, actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm, gonna, I'm going to send them post-fader. No, I'll send them pre-fader. By sending them pre-fader, it's gonna give me independent manual control over the dry French horn and the wet French horn. Um, that's fine. I really want more of that wet sound in there. So the, that means that this fader will probably get to drop a little bit more. So pre-fader it is. Set my level here. And I'm just going to solo the French horns for a moment and solo our music verb and play this back and hear what this is sounding like. Not very much at all, is it? Okay, did I actually send it there? Oh, I didn't. That might help if I do that. Music verb. There we go. bigger. It's really not doing what I want. Better. I'm trying to get this really nice and long and legato sounding. Nice little tritone there. going to stick most of the echo of that on the right side. All right. Not bad. All right. So let's bring the music back in. Like it's, it's just not enough. It needs more. And I think this actually needs to be moved back slightly in time. Yeah. So right about here. 
needs to kick in. So we're going to just move this back ever so slightly. Right about there. somewhere. The horns. Huge difference. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's bring the vocal back in and hear how that's sounding. Still a little too much music in the beginning. Mary had a little So there's it's the strings here. I have a weird timing thing that I heard the other day that's just going to drive me nuts. <laughs> it's like a it's like a slow come in right here. And I could back the vocal up. I like it kind of off a little bit, but what that means is I'm going to need I'm going to need to move those strings. So maybe I fade these out. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Now, again, I could do this via automation by going into my automation mode or I could just keyframe this manually. So this is an example where I'm just going to keyframe manually. Okay. So this is about where we're going to get back to normal volume. So we're going to drop this. Let's see about 10 10 decibels 8 decibels. Let's see how that we're just carving out a little bit of space here. Music verb. We'll keep this post fader. We're just going to add a little bit of the strings to that reverb. Just again, just add a little ambience there. I don't want too much. I don't want to drown the strings, uh, but just a little bit. So let's hear. What, we're also going to hear the the uh, echoes of the French horns. But let's hear what that sounds like. Sounding pretty good. All right, now these Sforzando strings need more cowbell. Sure it does. <laughs> See, now these horns already had reverb on them. I don't even need to really, and it looks like I even put some on there and a delay. Maybe I don't need the verb on there. Let's see. Yeah. Let's 
hear what it sounds like. Now this has an enormous amount of low end in it. I like it. I'm just gonna cut a little bit. cutting around 312 hertz this is an area where uh, again around 250 to 315 350 muddy heading towards boxy um, because this is a sampled string uh, again I'm playing a lot of low end fifths or fourths and pedal tone an octave below with cello and contrabass uh, it just has this is a little bit of buildup so it's gonna cut about a DB uh, almost 2 dB. We're still boosting at around 3k here. I'm just going to bring out some of the nice mid-range glossiness of the of the strings. Um, yeah, that's good. And I think the Sforzando strings, these just need maybe just a little compression. They don't get very loud, as you can see. And maybe for this, we'll go into, uh, yeah, let's do the Yuri 1176. And as you've heard me mention before, I always love to see if there's any presets for these things to get started. Um, I'm looking for strings here. Doesn't look like anyone's used this much for strings. Um, this one, this is the, the Yuri 1176, is a really classic 60s compressor limiter. Again, it, it, it just has a lot of warm analog characteristics, but it also has, as you can see, uh, it's, it has fixed ratio settings. So 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1, and all is like the full limit. Um, you know, for strings, typically do probably 4 to 1 fairly fast attack, fast release. Uh, let's see what we got here. And that's pretty good. That just kind of worked just as it was there. Barely tweaked anything there. So this attack, about 4.4. Just giving us a little more punctuation on those attacks. If I adjust that release, I can probably pump it a little bit more. And the key here on the gain reduction meter, I'm looking for it to go beyond minus four every time there's a hmm, 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 right? If I'm not seeing it go beyond minus four, it's not compressing, right? We've talked about that a lot of times. So this one, the metering is so accurate, you can really set this nicely. Now, normally I'd give this additional boost. I don't want to boost it too much. I just kind of want to even things out, but punctuate those little attacks. By giving it a slightly longer release, you're really getting more of that. <laughs> and that's what I want. I just want to kind of 
slightly hit you in the face. Yeah, nice. Okay. All right. Mervin, where do you need to learn sound engineering online? You should go to my YouTube channel, Jason Levine Video, where there are a hundred plus videos on audio engineering stuff. There's a whole YouTube um, playlist series called Audio 101. They're recorded quite a few years ago now. All the data, all the info is really good, if I do say so myself. They were also sourced from live streams, so there's a lot of stuff like this where if I didn't, I didn't edit a lot of those back in the day when I uploaded them to YouTube, so you'll often get the, thanks, Tim, and then I answer something and then go back to what I was talking about. So some people find that very annoying. <laughs> However, there's really good information in there. There's 20 plus episodes. Well, in just the audio 101, I think there's 20 episodes. It's 20 plus hours. It's really detailed. I mean, if you really want to learn a lot of super nerdy stuff around audio, I would highly recommend that. And of course, there's just lots of other resources, but this one's going to be a little more audition specific, but the knowledge imparted in there is also kind of universal in terms of how to set equalizers and compressors and mastering and mixing techniques and all that kind of stuff. All right. Okay. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. Little lamb, little lamb. Right. So right there we have those horns. Little we need more horns there. So this is a perfect, per, this is a perfect opportunity. Oh, I had the, I had that off. Let's see if it's louder now with the, uh, the verb on. something is happening just really doesn't fit now at all, but it's in there. Again, we're cutting the music after it's already been cut to this particular time. So what we could do, this is actually a cool thing. Um, we could use um, the essential sound panel. This would be a really easy way. If we wanted to duck everything underneath that little section right there, we could have everything duck down um, while that's being said. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring back in the sound effects. Let's listen to the whole mix now. And in fact, here's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to take all of the sub mixing subgroups, try and drag them all together. Cause now really my mix, it's, it's about just wor working with these fade these, uh, grouped faders. Music verb, vocal verb, and put music right there. Okay. So let's wind this back again. And now let's play. Coming together. <laughs> uh, that is hilarious. Okay, just checking on. There we go. 
Tim, I thought you were supposed to use the 76 mostly for sharp transients like in drums. Um, that's where it was commonly used. Again, uh, it's very good at creating a very thumpy, th th thwarted kind of sound. So in the same vein, that's why it's being used on Sforzando because you have the hum, 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 right? Just trying to get those attack transients of the, <clears throat> of the bow before it gets into the, the tremolo part. So same concept, really. Um, and again, it just, it also tends to warm uh, digital sounds up really, really nicely. So you're right on, you're right on point there. Bernadette felt that slap. All right, thank you, Mervin. All right, yeah, definitely check it out. Okay. And Tim, yes, he asked a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, so funny. Okay. Mervin, do I use Ableton Live? I do not, because uh, as many of you know who watch, I, I record everything manually. So no, I don't use Ableton. I don't do any MIDI. I like Ableton. I have it. Um, I don't love the UI. If I could get around the UI, that would probably be my... I'd probably move to that. As I've told many of you, I'm feeling the push lately, especially because I use so many VSTIs that I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to move off of Audition at some point. It's sad to say, but hey, we don't, we don't support that stuff. And uh, as much as I love playing everything manually, live, old school, which just dates me and my gray hair, you know, sequencing things just, it's, uh, it just makes life a lot easier. So I don't use it, but I have used it, and it's great. Um, okay. So that's actually sounding really pretty good. Um, let's do the last thing that I was just mentioning here, because I think this is a cool... This is a cool thing that you can do. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this now. Okay. So, and I wonder, you know what? I've never actually, no, I, okay. It has to be on, has to be on files. Okay. So we're going to use the essential sound panel and we're going to do something a little bit, a little bit different than, than I would normally do. So, when you're ducking something, like what I want to do is I want to duck the music when this happens. Okay. Not the screams. I'll leave the screams as they are. They're a little bit loud, by the way. Let's, let's turn those down. Um, go back to this. Okay. So, and maybe I actually, now I know what I want to do. I just want to duck the vocals. I'm gonna leave the music at the same volume, but duck my vocals. So here's what we're going to do. And by ducking, I mean I'm going to automatically lower the volume of the vocals. Now I could envelope those. Initially I was gonna do all the music and the vocal. Let, let's see, let's see if it works the way I want. I'm talking to myself a lot here, my brain's operating. So I'm going to select the vocals here. Remember there's the low voice, the double. And I'm going to tag these as music. All right. Okay. Then I'm going to come over to these two clips of uh, Michael saying that something's happening, and I'm going to tag those as dialogue. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the music tagged things, and I'm going to turn on ducking. All right. And here, what it's what you have three settings. All right. Sensitivity threshold, how quickly it kicks in. Duck amount, which is how much it's going to lower the volume. So 18 dB is pretty is a lot, but maybe let's do around 12. That might also be too much. But we, the whole idea is I'm wanting to bring down the vocal so that the something is happening comes through. You'll still hear it. It's just below everything. And then the fade time is how quickly it goes into the duck, how quickly it goes into that attenuation, and then how quickly or slowly it recovers to the regular volume. So 800 milliseconds, that's eight tenths of a second. Maybe it needs to be a little bit faster. So let's do like half a second. Okay. And when I do that, what you'll see on here is that it has automatically created little keyframes for me. Can you see that? So now when I play this, All right, now let's go to, it was at 18. Let's go to 20. 
all right, and see how much lower it is. Take a listen. Do you see? Pretty cool, right? So easy. Now, if you're listening, you're like, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. Well, let's turn it off. Okay, so here's what it was before. You're kind of missing the something's happening because I'm singing loudly over it. Turn it back on, wind it back, take a listen. Now it's a little too much, obviously. So let's go back to where did I have it? About, about twelve-ish. Not elvish, twelve-ish. Let's even do fourteen. People are going to be having nightmares. I mean, why do I keep hearing? Truly, one of my most horrific-sounding vocals <laughs> that I just love sharing publicly. Okay. So, we're gonna save this. We're gonna paint it yellow and ship it. I don't know where that phrase originally came from. I hate using expressions like that, but that's what a, a colleague of mine used to say. Put it in the box and ship it. Let's take a listen now to the final version. Let's go 150%, 100%. All right, here we go. Pleased. <laughs> ah. Small details do make a big difference. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. Steve, love the auto. Creepy all the way. Thank you, Bernadette. Paint it yellow like every bus in audition. That's very good, Tim. Thank you. I'm all scared. Yep. All right. Amazing, Mervyn. Thank you. Okay. So, all right. Awesome. Thank you for being part of that creepy journey. I'm actually, I think I might even post that to YouTube. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So lastly, before we say goodbye, again, more, <laughs> more unrehearsed single take live performances. You can see here, vocal 01, 02, 03, no cuts, just live. I woke up yesterday morning with the song Living in the City by Stevie Wonder in my head. I don't know why, it just was. And I woke up in the morning and I kept hearing the, the beat to it in my head. I hope those drums are coming through. By the way, I'm just playing that with my hand here, single-handedly. Um, so I started with one and then just stacked about six harmonies here. So I just want to let you hear a little bit of this, what, what this sounds like. All right. So this is me waking up and walking in this room and going, I need to do this right now. <laughs> this is, this is how my brain works. All right. Take a listen here. Oh, and it's totally dry. No effects, no EQ, no nothing. You can see here, just balance the levels of the various vocals. Take a listen. Here we go. Living just enough for the city, baby. Living just enough for the city, baby. Living just enough. All right. And it's just stacked harmony. So here's the first part. Living just enough fun. Living just enough. For the city, baby. And you know, hitting hitting what they would refer to as blue notes, really trying to bend those blue notes, not easy. Also not easy super early in the morning. Living just enough 
for the city, baby, living just enough. Yeah, that's not bad for high early in the morning, too. Living just enough for the city, baby, living just enough for the city, baby. But the one that really glues it together is this one down here. For the city, baby, living just enough let's put on some bass for the eq city, baby living just enough for the city baby all right and now it's gonna be hard to play because well let's see living just enough for the city baby living just ah. enough for the city, baby. Son of a gun, screwing it up. Living just enough for the city, baby. Living just enough for the city, baby. Living just enough for the city, baby. Living.